Through a momentary gap in the bodies, he could see her coming toward him. No more than five feet tall, hunched forward and wearing a faded red raincoat. Her wiry gray hair was held in place under a clear plastic rain hood, and she stared ahead through the thick lenses of her wide-rimmed glasses. She had to be 80 if she was a day, he thought as he looked into her wrinkled, liver-spotted face. So why was she a threat? He had to act quickly before she disappeared again. He couldn't risk losing her. For the first time, he made direct eye contact with her, and he knew immediately that he had to do it. He had no choice. He had to do it, and he had to do it right now. Dropping his newspaper and briefcase and umbrella, Simmons pushed his way through the crowd, then reached out and grabbed hold of her by the wide lapels of her raincoat. Before she, she could react to what was happening, he spun her around through almost a complete turn and threw her back toward the building he'd just left. Her frail body was light, and she virtually flew across the footpath her feet barely touching the ground before she smashed up against the thick safety glass shop window and bounced back into the street. Stunned with pain and surprise, she lay face down on the cold, ring-soaked pavement, too shocked to move. Simmons pushed his way back toward her, barging through a small crowd of concerned shoppers who had stopped to help. Ignoring their angry protests, he dragged her to her feet and shoved her toward the shop window again, her head whipping back on her shoulders as she clattered against the glass for the second time. What the hell are you doing, you idiot? An appalled bystander yelled, grabbing hold of Simmons' coat sleeve and pulling him back. Simmons twisted and squirmed free from the man's grip. He tripped and landed on his hands and knees in the gutter. She was still on her feet just ahead of him. He could see her through the legs of the other people crowding around her. Oblivious to the howls and screams of protest ringing in his ears, Simmons quickly stood up, pausing only to pick up his umbrella from the edge of the footpath and to push his wire-framed glasses back up the bridge of his nose. Holding the umbrella out in front of him like a bayonet rifle, he ran at the woman again. Please, she begged, as he sunk the sharp metal tip of the umbrella deep into her gut and then yanked it out again. She sunk, slumped back against the window, clutching the wound as the stunned and disbelieving crowd quickly engulfed them in. Through the confusion, he watched as her legs gave way, and she collapsed heavily to the ground, blood oozing out of the deep hole in her side. Maniac, someone spat in his ear. Simmons spun around and stared at the owner of the voice. Jesus Christ, another one. This one was just like the old woman. And there's another, and another. And they were all around him now. He stared helplessly into the sea of angry faces which surrounded him. They were all the same. Every last one of them had suddenly become a threat to him. He knew there were too many of them, but he had to fight. In desperation, he screwed his hand into a fist and swung it into the nearest face. As a teenage boy recoiled from the sudden impact and dropped to the ground, a horde of uniformed figures leaped through the crowd and wrestled Simmons to the ground. Rain.